Hey, my name's Kyle. Everybody just calls me Big K. I'm pretty sure you can figure out why. And I wanted to bring a brand new cooking show to you guys. This is season one, episode one of Big K's Kitchen. It's the pilot episode. And season one is going to follow a theme of home cooked meals. These are meals that you're not trying to make look extravagant or trying to uh, put in new or different ingredients. These are meals that you make for your family. They're meant to feed a lot of people on a little budget or they're just things that you know everybody really enjoys. You see, I grew up in a coal mining town outside of Pittsburgh in a German family. That gave me a very uh, spe specific set of tastes and, and smells and different things that we'd use uh, growing up. My wife will also be doing a couple episodes grew up the daughter of a Cuban immigrant in South Florida. So her food that she grew up with is totally different from mine. So they have different tastes and smells, ingredients, all the things that they use are wildly different. But So we're going to start off with the basic mixture of beef and rice that I've mixed together. The rice can be uh, just any leftover rice you might have had from another meal. Just uh, don't do what I do sometimes and make rice and then put molten hot rice into the beef and try to mix it up because then it messes with your hand a little bit. But also, anytime you're making meatballs, I find it easier just to take off the ring real quick. Um, anyway, to this, we're not going to add a ton. We're going to add a few shots of Worcestershire. I like to use just some steak seasoning. Since I'm in Central Florida, I, I enjoy using the Everglades seasoning, but really anything you have near you can work. Um, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. All right, and then just work all the, the seasonings in. Make sure that the rice is fully mixed in to the, with the meat. Now the meat is just a basic ground beef. Nothing too special. I've even used uh, ground turkey. Uh, you can use almost anything. Nope. It's trying to get away there. All right, so we see this. And there's one final ingredient that we need to add. So we just need to add one egg. That's one egg per pound of meat that you use is pretty uh, good ratio. All that's doing is it's going to make sure that the meatballs hold together and it adds just an eh, last little bit of moisture as you're forming them as well. Anyway, now that we have the meat mixture all settled, we can move on to the other ingredient. Our next ingredient is going to be a head of cabbage. Now for this amount we really only need one small head. And to and what we're going to do is first off we're going to core it, which is you want to cut in at an angle around the core to get it out. And also you're getting those base uh, stalks of the cabbage as well. And once you've cut around you just yank the core out, flip, all right. Now from there, all we're going to do is cut it into about half inch wide strips. Same thing with this guy. There we go. So now we have all of our cabbage ready. Now it's about time to build, but last but not least, we need to make the sauce. Now this sauce is what my mom made and it's really still is my favorite. It's just one can of tomato sauce. And one can of 
condensed tomato soup. And I do like to add just a touch of the steak seasoning. And a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Now, this is one of those things that you could try to uh, make, a, make a sauce that doesn't use the canned tomato soup. Um, I've made it before um, making my own tomato soup, but this is just what I grew up on. It's one of those things where sometimes you just want what you grew up with and not the most, not the most fancy version of it. Anyway, so we have the sauce. So then it's just a little bit of layering. We're going to do a little bit of sauce on the bottom. Let that coat our Dutch oven. Then we're going to do some of the lettuce. I mean, the cabbage, I mean. The lettuce would be really horrible. Don't, don't do that. And also add in some sauerkraut because we're German and it's necessary in almost every dish. That adds just a touch of acidity into the into everything. And then we'll move on to making the meatballs, which we make little quarter pound balls. And then just place them around. Right. And there we see we have just our balls kind of circled around inside. Now we're going to add a drizzle of the sauce over that to cover. And then add in enough cabbage to coat over the meatballs. Maybe toss out any super thick center parts. Break them up as you go. All right. Okay. And then from there we add our last little bit of sauerkraut. On top, and some of the sauerkraut juice, always delicious. And finally, we want to pour on the rest of our sauce just to coat. And what's going to happen is as the meat cooks, the beef fat's going to mix in with the sauce, and the cabbage is going to cook down, and it's going to complete everything. So now, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Now, to check doneness, we're not really going to check the meatballs. We're going to check the cabbage. When the cabbage is toothsome, it's not still crunchy at all, but you don't want to go so far as to, as to it being mushy. Usually once the cabbage is done, the meatballs are done. Of course, you'll want to check one before saying it's completely finished. So we'll just... Lit up and put this in the oven. All right, the porcupine balls are out of the oven and they actually uh, took about 55 minutes. So uh, you do want to make sure to, to check them and not just go by a straight time. Um, so pull the lid off. And I know, I know it's beautiful, right? <laughs> um, this is definitely not one of those foods that looks pretty coming out of the pot, but serve it up with a little mashed potatoes on the plate grab one of these balls put it right there in the center grab yourself some of that cabbage dance it around a little bit there we go and then after you do that 
get some of that sauce. Just lay that on over top. Now, I guarantee you, this may not be the prettiest thing, but it is delicious. You get wonderful uh, texture from the creaminess of some mashed potatoes. You have the little bit of toothsomeness from the cabbage. You have the nice meaty meatball that's there. And then you have this uh, acidic, but still kind of sweet uh, tomato sauce that's over top. And it's all just a very delicious, very down home. It'll fill up everybody on just a little bit. And it's definitely one of my favorites. So I just wanted to let you know, thank you so much for watching the first episode of Big K's Kitchen. I hope you continue to keep on watching and see what else we'll be making for you.